All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Me Boys podcast. Uh, you may notice that we've had a little bit of a brand change. Uh, turns out the, our previous name, the Farcast, was already be, being used by by a podcast and a couple of uh, businesses. So we decided, let's cut this off early. Let's let's switch it up. Uh, so we're the Me Boys now. Get used to it. My name's Josh. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> and, my name and Ray, Ray. <laughs> yeah, Ray, who are you? And uh, what have you been? What have you been getting up to, Ray? Um, well, because last time you ended the, the podcast with a couple of stories, I, I kind of wanted to to start this one with a with a story of my own that I that I remembered. I, I kind of blocked out of my memory for a long time. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh oh. So I'll, I guess I should just preface everything by saying that the people who were in my class and the class above me in high school the early high school I think I was probably in the ninth grade when this when this happened they like to annoy people while in the cinema well like other people people not not like not like everyone everyone else in the group hanging out other people they didn't know just spent <laughs> just going to the, the movies trying to watch a movie and they would annoy them by throwing popcorn and laughing too loudly and all that kind of shit so you're saying they're human trash <laughs> basically yeah um so yeah i think it was uh i think i was in the ninth grade at the time and we were it was my class and the class above me maybe with a few others who were younger than us we went to go see. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. It was a. It was a shitty, Benicio del Toro werewolf movie. I'm gonna look up the name of it now because I want to. I want to remember this. Benicio del Toro. Now, I don't know why that name rings a bell, but I don't know names. Are they related to Guillermo del Toro? I don't think he is related to Guillermo del Toro. Uh, what's it? It's called The Wolfman came out in 2010 so yeah i was probably in the ninth grade okay so we go to see the movie um i don't really know why like it it, it wasn't it's not one of those blockbusters that, are, that like come out it was just it was just something that's out so we went to go see it oh emily blunt's in it oh that's why you want to see it <laughs> yeah we went to go see mary poppins and the wolfman um so we go see it and as soon as the movie starts, we're all laughing about something. I, I I can't remember what exactly it was, but we're all laughing. We're all being annoying. And <laughs> I, pretty much when it comes to these things, laughing is as far as I'll go because that's something I can't really help. If something's funny enough, I'll laugh at it. And, you know, I have, I've been told I have a hyena laugh. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. So, but what, what, what my <laughs> classmates... And other people like to do. <laughs> they like to take just bits of their popcorn and throw it at people, like unsuspecting people, rows below them, and they just pretend that nothing ever happened. Just like to get a reaction. Uh, just because they were kids, you know, ninth graders just being annoying. Right. Typical thing. Um. So they loved that. I can't tell you how many times that used to happen. But that happened a lot, and I think that's probably what the rest of us were laughing about. It we're just throwing popcorn. Anyway, well, it's like halfway through the movie, and it comes. To, and I think most of us have calmed down at this point. I think we're we're still a little giddy. We're still like whispering. You started to run out of popcorn. <laughs> um, we started. We're still laughing a bit, whispering a little too loudly. Um. But there comes this scene where Benicio del Toro, who is a who is a werewolf, people are, have su suspected him of being the werewolf. So they capture him, and they take him into this like, oh, you know those like medical stadiums. Probably not the right like the stadium style medical. Uh, what are they? W what's the word for that? Stadiums that. I don't understand. Like <laughs> when there's a natural disaster and they set them up in football stadiums. No, no, no. So, so it's like a, a circular room, and then there are seats. Oh, like a, like a surgical stadium. Yeah, yeah, surgical stadium. 
so it would i think it was kind of like that if it wasn't a surgical stadium it was probably like a a like a courtroom type right old-fashioned but I, i'm pretty sure it was medical because they wanted to see like the anatomy and like how this guy turns into a werewolf mm-hmm. and it, at that moment i turned to my friend and we were the quieter ones and i said to him something along the lines of this is so dumb they know he's gonna be a werewolf what do they expect they're going to die and the guy in front of me just had enough <laughs> <laughs> he's like these damn kids <laughs> he he turns around and he tells me to shut up so me I'm being non-confrontational non-confrontation- I put my hand up to apologize and then I stay quiet the rest of the movie <laughs> at the end of the movie <laughs> he, he gets up turns around he looks at me and I can't remember what exactly he says but he's he's calling us loud and blah blah blah, blah. and then one of my friends sees that he's being confrontational and he's asking me what's up he says i said to him well we were being loud and he's not happy about it right um and we get out and (laughs) my friend who's i guess he's kind of confrontational he he wanted to talk to the guy we're already going our separate ways right yeah there's no reason to talk to him at this point but he's like yeah let me let me get into a little bit of shit yeah so he goes he's walking up to him and one of the younger kids in the group joined him (laughs) so so we were ninth and tenth grade this kid was probably seventh or eighth oh my god i don't want that as my backup (laughs) yeah so they go up there we see they're talking the 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 pissed off guys doing hand gestures and blah blah blah. but it looks like at the end of it (laughs) they 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 get off on good terms and then my friend gets back to me and he starts quoting what he said (laughs) and all i can remember was uh this guy indonesian guy a pretty heavy set gentleman Mm -hmm. he started he said he used a phrase that i remember to this day in a british accent (laughs) he said uh, he said something along like, you know, you don't you don't go to a movie and disturb other people. You know, I don't you don't piss in my cup and I don't piss in your cup. <laughs> <laughs> and that has stuck with me to this day. So he, he, he put on a British accent for that. I think I think his the way he spoke English was he had a British accent regardless, but. For well, that, he probably learned it from a British person or something. Probably. But for that phrase, it was just maxed out completely. Right, right. Yeah, from zero to 100 real quick. Yeah. <laughs> you should have said, don't piss on my popcorn, but, you know, it's pretty good, too. <laughs> yeah, and I was just, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's probably the, the, funniest, the funniest thing that's happened, like, going to the theater here right it's just, Wait, that, what? that was in indonesia right yeah, yeah yeah that was that was here the guy the guy was indonesian he was with his girlfriend too oh you guys are real jerks yeah <laughs> well to be fair you were pre- you were pretty non-confrontational there like i'll i've been in situations like that where my laughter is definitely like annoying other people right, right, right. But it's just sort of me having a good time yeah yeah i well, I mean, probably when I was a kid, I might have done some. I don't know. I don't think I ever threw popcorn at people. I no. feel like that's kind of even as a kid, I knew that was kind of a dick move. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the popcorn thing, I just seemed like a waste to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he paid for it. Yeah, um, but no, like the guy, the guy turned around and is, uh, you know, at that point, you just kind of take your cue. Like, all right, people are getting upset. Right, these people aren't just. Uh these are, people aren't just background in my life they're also just they're people and now they're annoyed at me yeah <laughs> and who knows maybe they really wanted to see this benicio del toro wolf werewolf movie you know yeah he went into it thinking like will the wolf man kill anyone i'm not sure <laughs> did his girlfriend say anything the whole time no she was really quiet see that that's probably why he turned around to you guys mm-hmm. i guarantee that same guy if he was watching by himself he would have never said anything 
Probably not. But he felt like obligated. I mean, at at the time, that guy was like, I think he was probably at least mid twenties, almost thirty. So, we were fourteen, fifteen. Oh, well, yeah, that's the thing too. It's like, easy... how? Yeah, <laughs> we were using marks. It's like, how much do you really want to like scold these random teenagers because mm-hmm. they threw pop? What I will say is, uh, he was not a victim of the popcorn. Oh, okay. He you, was. You just it's just not that a fan he was, of sound. Yeah, he was in the row right in front of us, so he heard everything. So inconsiderate, Ray. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and uh, uh, you know, I figured it's uh, it's the week of the Golden Globe, so I figured a movie story would kind of be fitting. Um, I don't know. Did you did you see anything this year that was? Of note, at least to you, because I haven't seen most of the most of the Golden Globe movies. Right now, um, I was looking at this earlier, and I think I have seen zero of the movies that were nominated for anything. In fact, I probably haven't even seen any movies from 2018 that weren't even nominated. Um, I think mostly what I've been watching has just been on Amazon, some of the older stuff. And I haven't really watched any sort of episodic uh, uh, thing to speak of. What about you? What What among the? I know you watched Harry uh, Harry Harry Poppins. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mar- Mary Poppins Returns, which sounds like a lot more of an action movie than it probably was. Yeah. Um, well, we that reminds me of the Mummy Returns. Actually, that's what I'm thinking. of. <laughs> Brendan Fraser is Mary Poppins. <laughs> you see him and he's all like depressed and disgusting looking because he's Brendan Fraser. <laughs> well, I only, um, I went to go see that movie because one, my sister was pretty keen because uh, that was one of the movies we saw as a kid that right. my dad like showed us. We watched really old movies as kids. Oh yeah, me too. And that's one of the ones too where like the the music of it you don't really i don't really remember the mu- the movie that much but the music of it i definitely remember and i remember all the chimney sweeps uh getting lung cancer and stuff yeah i well i remember i like i i can vaguely remember the the dance routine from the- I, yeah i remember the the chimney dance routine where they had their brooms or whatever and they were like jumping around the roofs yeah and and obviously everyone remembers a uh, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious oh yeah That's well, yeah everybody Oh, I, I know a really long word. <laughs> um, and chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chimney. <laughs> was was uh, Mary Poppins also the? They also did the spoonful of sugar song. Yeah, spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Right, right, right yeah. A lot of classics. Yeah, yeah. I was actually expecting a callback here and there from the new movie. So was there not a lot of music? There was a lot of music. I just uh, I thought maybe, maybe they would bring back Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. They maybe. didn't. No. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like to be fair, <laughs> I sounded like very fake there. You did. Um, I, I thought you were being <laughs> fake. <laughs> no, like, okay, my my <laughs> level of caring. <laughs> My level of caring for Mary Poppins is like pretty low, I'll be yeah. honest. However, I am genuinely surprised that they wouldn't bring back one of the most memorable things of Mary Poppins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Let's now move on. Okay. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Uh, so, so all right, well tell me about it as a as a movie. Maybe not so much as a Mary Poppins movie, but as a movie itself. As a movie itself, it's, I mean, it's solid enough. Uh, I think, I think Emily Blunt is, she does her best uh, way to, does her best to evoke that memory of the way Julie Andrews was Mary Poppins. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, the movie itself is fun enough to watch. Uh, I'm sure 
I'm sure like kids would enjoy it a lot more than I did. Not to say I didn't enjoy it, but you know, it is a kids movie after all. But no, it was it was it was cool to see the the character back, even though I'm I am one of those people that are that are kind of sick of reboots and remakes and things like that. I mean, this is a little different, right? It's Mary it is. Poppins. It's, a, it's, a it's not. They're not like re. They're not re. Blah, 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 blah. They're not <laughs> remaking it, and <laughs> they're not remaking it into like an action movie or something. Even though it sounds like it is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's a. Uh, apparently, there are eight Mary Poppins books. There are books. Yeah. <laughs> Were they like written like before the original movie? Yeah. Like, yeah. Old timey think... stuff. Yeah. So. Like, uh, there are three books, I believe, there are three or five, I can't remember exactly, that are individual stories on, on their mm-hmm. own, and then three of them are what happens in between short stories. That's so weird. I never really thought of it as having a novelization. <laughs> Me neither. Imagine if people were as into Harry, fuck, I said it again, Harry, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Poppins. Imagine if people <laughs> Imagine if people were as into like the Mary Poppins universe as they were with the Harry Potter universe. I read I was surprised I read, got through that sentence. I read a I read a I read a fan theory once that said Mary Poppins was a Hogwarts graduate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and these books are significantly older than than JK Rowling. Right. So, so okay. cool idea, if, but if, no. If Mary Poppins was a was a wizard, or are they called witches? Witches, I guess. If Mary Poppins was an old witch, what a uh, <laughs> what a uh, what what's that called? What school or what? Uh, like Gryffindor, or Slytherin, or oh, what house? What house? What house would she be? Oh, uh, bit of a Hufflepuff. I don't know what these mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm like your grandpa trying to talk to you about your interests. Um. Well, we don't. So we know that Gryffindor is like the brave house. Slytherin is where all the They're like sneaky snakes. Yeah, the sneaky ones, the ones that always end up being bad guys. So how can you ever be surprised? Um. It's really convenient of the movies to create a whole house of just the the enemies for the movie. <laughs> it's like really holding your audience's hand with that one. Uh, Hufflepuff, they're like the nice house. It seems like everyone hates the Hufflepuff house just because like they're so... Is there anyone from the Hufflepuff house who's like actually meaningful to the story? Uh, in the movies, I can't think of anyone and i've only seen the movie so <laughs> you've only seen oh wow i'm exposing you right now i don't know if we should leave this in <laughs> <laughs> i'm not a harry potter fan like a, like i'm not a huge fan i like the movies i grew up with the movies right. but so you're was, a fan i'm a fan of the movies and you look like harry potter so oh my god <laughs> should i tell that story uh yeah i think it'd be pretty funny but wait, let's answer this question. Yeah, go, first. go ahead. Because <laughs> I, uh, so Hufflepuff is the nice house, and no one, I feel like no one ever wants to be put into the Hufflepuff house when I, when you do. Well, that's really- yeah, that's the impression I get. It's like it's very passive. Why would you want to be in there? You're just going to be a background character. Exactly. Um, so I took one of those quizzes because I had a Harry Potter marathon not too long ago. Because I was like, mm-hmm. oh, you know what? Let me watch these movies again. And then I got Hufflepuff, and I was pretty bummed. Damn, dude. But um, well, that's the thing. If you're taking, if you're taking an online quiz to find out what house you're in, you're kind of a Hufflepuff. Yeah. If that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, the last house is Ravenclaw, and they're like the, the smart house. Smart. Aren't maybe, they all smart? Maybe, maybe smart ass house. Uh, okay. Uh, and I feel like that's where Mary Poppins would be. She's a smart ass. Kind of. 
You know, she's yeah, she is. She's sort of a trickster, isn't she? Yeah, she's got yeah. her she's got her bag full of furniture, and yeah, that's really all I remember from the movie. I mean, I feel like her she it would be between Ravenclaw and Gryffindor because she wouldn't be in Slytherin because she's a her character is supposed to be a good person, right? Uh, but she's not like yeah, that's yeah, that's the last house I'd put her in. Yeah, and maybe Hufflepuff. for the maybe for the action reboot. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think yeah, Ravenclaw most likely. But yes, all right, Harry Potter story, go for it. All oh, right. So, at one point, I'll, I'll keep it pretty brief. But at one point, a couple of years ago, um, at our university. Ray was taking part in a was it a charity game? Charity soccer game? Actually, yeah, I think it was one of the charity events. If it was I think you, you could win stuff, but it was charity or whatever. Yeah, if it wasn't charity, it was just intramurals. Right. So yeah, there was uh there's a soccer game or football for our for our international listeners. Um and so Ray was playing, he was uh he was the goalkeeper. And it was inside this gymnasium. And I think it was it was teams of five or teams of three. I think it was teams of five, right? Uh, yeah, five or six. Five or six. Oh, they, they, either way. So, yeah, Ray was playing with a couple of his friends. And I had come out to watch. And so I'm come standing on, on the they're, sidelines. They're your during... friends, too. <laughs> well, one of them was. Um, I... You know, I, I, uh, oh yeah. I mean, I, I knew the guys, but I just drank with them. Really, I, I didn't really know them too well because I didn't play soccer. Um, but anyway, so during one of the games, they were, they were down a point or two or whatever. So, uh, dire straits need to be go time. And this guy next to me, who's on one of the other teams, he kept on calling out. Well, first I hear him talking to these girls, and he's saying, "Oh, that guy playing goalie looks like Harry Potter." Um, and they're like, oh, whatever. And then I guess that wasn't enough for him. So he starts he starts yelling out. He's, he keeps on going, Harry, Potter, Potter, Harry. So anyway, basically, he keeps on calling out. I'm getting annoyed. And so my plan was to just say to him, hey, dude, like, could you please stop? Because I'm just trying to watch. But sort of the heat of the moment. I didn't even realize what I was, but I went over and I talked to him and I was like, hey, would you mind shutting the fuck up? And <laughs> I went over and said that to him. And I'm like, yeah, because my buddy's playing out there and you're shouting out this shit, like, shut the fuck up. And right away, he's in front of these girls too. So sort of like your movie story, I felt like he was sort of obligated to be more defensive uh -huh. than he might have been. And so he's like, Oh, it was funny, yeah, because at first he was like, all right, sorry, dude, geez. But then like a second later, and he's like, and fuck you, man. You can't talk to me like that. I'm like, okay. Um, and he's like, <laughs> it, yeah, it was so weird because there's such a switch because like at first his reaction was just to, like avoid conflict and just be like, and this dude was bigger than me. Like, especially back then, I was not in great shape. And um yeah, at first he was totally non-confrontational, and then like a second later he realized the situation, and he was like, wait a minute, this guy can't talk to me like that. So he's like, you know, we can go outside right now. And so I'm just standing there looking at him, and I'm thinking, that's how you know that that I don't always have the best ideas. I, I stood there, and I thought for a second, yeah, maybe we should. <laughs> let, let me go outside and fight this guy at a charity soccer game over – <laughs> saying Harry Potter. That sounds like a good idea. Over saying Harry Potter to someone you say Harry Potter to. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. But I don't know. <laughs> well, I think... I actually remember like the, the when you were telling me about it, right after it happened. Um, You had told, you told him to shut the fuck up. And then he says, oh, yeah, 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 man, sorry. And then he stops for a second and he goes, I'm not, I'm not scared of you, bro. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he did say that. Yeah, I'm not scared of you. It's like, first of all, I didn't say you were, but 
yeah, it's like he assumes that I have to be like I have to be able to overpower him in order to say like, hey, just like don't be an annoying asshole the whole time. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so I was just looking at him, and then I just walked away because I was like, all right, I wasn't even planning to escalate it this much. Let me just watch the game. I think you guys lost. <laughs> we did. We we lost. <laughs> so yeah, not worth it. But yeah, I just I just got reminded of that story. Um, real quick, uh, before we stop talking about movies, mm-hmm. um, I just wanted to bring up two movies that I saw this year. They didn't come out this year, okay, but for them. anyone listening, what's that? But you saw them this year. Yeah, I saw them this year. So for anyone listening who might want to, who might want to watch something, I can recommend, I can recommend two movies. Now, my tastes aren't always, uh. It might not be your tastes, uh, but I, I like I like a good bit of schlock, I like a good bit of um, so bad it's a good kind of stuff. Um, it tends to mix with horror uh, as well because that's where you get some of the best of that stuff. So I think I told you about this, Ray, but uh, Sleepaway Camp, the original movie. That I think you did, yeah. That movie's great, like. So there's a bunch of sequels to it, just like every movie that's successful, people want to just like make a million sequels and ruin it. But that movie was like legitimately pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um and the ending, which I won't spoil, it came out it came out in the eighties. Um the ending is like so so wild that I don't want to spoil it for anyone. They should just watch it. Uh I watched it on Amazon. I don't I don't think it's still up there. You might have to watch it on a separate thing, but Sleepaway Camp, really good. Surprise ending. Uh, well, sort of surprise. We sort of picked up on what it was, but even though we sort of knew what it was, just seeing it, mm-hmm. that was... But I think a, a lot of people would enjoy that. Now, for some of my more discerning uh, discerning listeners who only like the most uh, quality entertainment, I would recommend a movie I watched recently for, for the Christmas season, which was Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. What? From 1964. Jeez. This movie is like... I don't know. I think that's a test to see how compatible... Uh, this should be a test that I put on dating profiles. I'll just list this movie and ask that they enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Because it's so it's so cheesy and such like early Star Trek level of like space stuff mixed in with Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's fucking hilarious. So I, I would recommend that. Um, Those are both on, you b- saw them both on Amazon? Yeah, I saw them both on Amazon. Uh, Santa Claus Conquers the Martians is, is available to watch now. Sleepaway Camp, I think, is on one of the, like, you know how Amazon has, like, the separate channels that you have to subscribe to? Mm-hmm. Um, but you, you might be able to find it online anywhere. Um I would not recommend any of the sequels for Sleepaway Camp, though. Like, those are, they completely miss the point of what the movie was, and mm-hmm. they just turn it into a slasher film. Um, which it sort of is, but outside of that, there's, there's a pretty crazy plot. Um, but yeah, sadly, I didn't watch really any movies made in 2018. So those are my recommendations. Movies from 64 and, Sleep away camp was what? 64 and, and 83. <laughs> <laughs> and not even like not even like the best movies of those years, probably. It's just stuff that I watched and I got a good laugh out of. You probably have to watch them with somebody to get the full effect of uh-huh. just like reacting to the crazy nonsense. Right. But yeah, big fan of those. Oh. All right. So we've talked about movies for a while. Mm-hmm. Um so last week you talked about what you've been playing. So, I want to talk a little bit about the old Nintendo Switch, mm-hmm. which uh, which I was gifted over the holidays, and uh, it's one of those things where Nintendo never puts their stuff on sale. So I was sort of interested in a couple of games, uh, but I didn't really feel like paying the price for it. So since I was gifted it, I was like, all right, now we're talking. Um, but I've been playing. Well, I just got done pretty much playing. Uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Uh, and then now I started playing uh, 
Super Mario Odyssey. And those two are like the main selling point, I think, of the console. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a little... I'm, go ahead. No, Breath of the Wild is supposed to be one of the best games of the year, isn't it? Yeah, I believe so. Um, I don't know how accurate that is. I, I liked it. Um, well, yeah, I guess I'll talk about it a little bit. I've played it. I've played a good number of Zelda games, um, and I've and I've watched a good few of them. I'd say Breath of the Wild is probably my favorite Zelda game, mm-hmm. but it's also a lot different, um, or at least a good bit different, because there's a lot of open world RPG elements. I mean, and and Zelda games are open world, uh, so to speak, but this is more so in a traditional RPG way. Um, yeah, I, I was a big fan of it. Uh, there's a couple of things I didn't especially like, like the weapon durability system, just because I'm never a fan of that, because I like to search around and do all the side quests, and if I find a cool weapon, I want to be able to use that. Mm-hmm. In this, there's not really unique weapons outside of the Master Sword. It's just you find them, you use them, they break. It, it fits the game, but I'm not a huge fan of that sort of thing. Um, and then also... The game looks great, um, like for a you know a Nintendo game. Uh, it's got a great it's got a great style, but the voice acting, at least the English voice acting, because I, I have it on English, is just piss poor in my opinion. Like, oh, I thought that, the way you built that up, I thought you were yeah, I was going to say it was, it was good, amazing. <laughs> no, no, sadly not. Like, it just missed the mark entirely for me. Like, I think. Most other things, even the weapon durability system, that's just the choice right. that that I wouldn't make with a game, but they made, and, and it works, and you know there's merit to it. I just don't personally like it. Mm-hmm. the The voice acting though is just like maybe I'm crazy, and maybe other people like it, but it's just awful. I mean, obviously Link doesn't talk; he never talks. It's sort of got main character syndrome. Mm-hmm. Um. But like Zelda has got this fake, weird British accent, um, and she, I, it's just ugh. I've I've never been a fan of like when 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 you're the main character and they don't speak. Oh well, uh, yeah, I mean that kind of goes back to like the whole we were talking about like role playing. Yeah, yeah. Last week, and so I understand it because you don't want to impose too much on the player like you don't really want if you want them to to see themselves as a main character you don't want to speak for them or else it's going to take them out of it right plus you never know how how certain players want their their character be voiced so i I get i get why it's just it i i always just i always just find it awkward whenever those oh it's very awkward come up and they're just nodding along and (laughs) yeah Everyone yeah, I mean, I can, them of the other yeah, I can understand not wanting, not wanting to for practical reasons or not wanting to for story reasons to have, you know, dialogue options or something. Oh, to be fair, a lot of games that have dialogue options, mm-hmm. it's basically the same thing because you have to say more or less what they want you to say. Right. Well, like, I, and sometimes your dialogue doesn't matter. Yeah. I, well, I remember in uh, Dragon Age Inquisition. I think mm-hmm. well, I never played that far into it, but they gave you like two or three voices to choose from two or three male voices, two or three right. female voices. So I thought that was cool. Like you could, it kind of, it adds to the character. If you're, if you're a noble character with a upper class background, then they get the, the more posh voice and, and their award. And are there, there actual, rugged. are there actual like voice dialogue parts or is it more for just like combat sounds and, and no, general? No, it's, uh, so those voice actors like voice the dialogue. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. And do you talk in like most cutscenes? Yeah. Um, at least the one as where I played. Yeah. I didn't, like I said, I didn't mm-hmm. get that far into it at all, but yeah, you weren't they, a big fan of it, right? No, again, it was kind of like a, like I, and I never know the word for it. Um, but when you kind of click and they all go to one, <laughs> they all go to one place and attack there. 
Right. It just it just made it seem like um, the the combat didn't uh, wasn't very. Uh, maybe not the combat itself, but like each move wasn't very meaningful because it was the same move over and over. Hmm. I mean, yeah, I know Dragon. I played uh, Dragon Age Origins, and I know you can sort of choose to play it in more tactical mode, or you can sort of let it play out as sort of action. Yeah, but if you uh -huh. if you let it play out as action, like uh, it's it's still the same animation. Yeah, yeah. So it just it just kind of looks a little a little weird. Yeah, it's sort of like a single player MMO in that way. Yeah. Um, where you sort of stand there and you do your animations. Mm -hmm. Um. Although that was what I was going to say, because you can choose the voice or whatever. That sort of reminds me of MMOs where you can sort of select that sort of stuff. But I can understand why they wouldn't have they wouldn't have Link speaking Legend of Zelda. I get that. But I was just disappointed, uh, especially in the voice for Zelda, because, you know, obviously she's a, she's a main focus of the game. And every time she talks about anything, I can't feel any emotion for the story because I'm just focused on how bad she sounds. Um, and then also, like, the... I don't know how much you know about Zelda, but the the Great Deku Tree. No idea. You... I know of the okay. games, and I've played a bit of them. I played a bit of them as a kid, but it was always right. on. It wasn't. It was on my friend's system. I mm -hmm. never. I never had a Zelda game. Right. Um, well, basically, the Great Deku Tree is is just a giant tree, sort of an ent. Um, well, not an ent, really. I'm just thinking about Lord of the Rings, um, but it's a giant tree giant talking tree with a face but in this game his voice i don't think he's ever been voiced before um and having him have a human voice is a bit of an odd choice mm -hmm. but he sounds the voice actor sounds like he's a, a 30 year old doing like sort of an older man voice and it just takes me right out of it like here's this massive tree talking to me about my epic quest and it sounds like a, a fucking idiot <laughs> so yeah wasn't a huge fan of that part of the game um, but overall, I'd say it was my favorite, uh, my favorite Zelda game, even though I haven't, I haven't played all of them, but I have, I've watched all of them and I've played a good number of them, but mm -hmm. I think it's my favorite. I think the one um, I got to try years ago was Ocarina of, Ocarina of Time. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the one I tried. Yeah. That one's great. Um, I remember there was like a flute mission. Or I guess. Well, I mean, the whole sort of or... thing is about the Ocarina. So right. like you use it to play different songs for different, uh, different parts of it, right? And yeah, I mean, the, I said it's a lot different in terms of open world. Like they have open world stuff mm -hmm. in those games, less so in Ocarina, but like in uh, Wind Waker, uh, there's a there's a good number of open world stuff. Although you're well, sort of, I heard in, in the new one, the the open world aspect of it is uh realistic in a sense for example in uh the guy the guy i, I watched explain it was comparing mm -hmm. uh the open world in red dead 2 and uh zelda so in red dead 2 if you're journeying journeying along and you decide to camp you just press one button and the camp is automatically set up for you you have a campfire even if it's raining the camp right. fire still goes on and then he's he goes to zelda and he says if you want to build a camp you gotta find shelter um you gotta have wood you gotta have stones to 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 make a fire uh and the fire won't obviously doesn't go on go turn on in a in, in rain and that's one of the right. aspects like in the game that you actually have to be covered you have to have all the equipment necessary uh, yeah, I mean, actually, now I sort of want to do a Zelda review, but I didn't want to do like a full Zelda review now. But that is a system like it's sort of a lesser thing because you can go through the whole game without without ever making a campfire yourself. Okay. Um, but there are, are sort of those survival elements without it being a survival game. Like, mm -hmm. there's you can make, make food, and you don't have a hunger meter or anything, but the food is just to recover your HP, and you can also do things like uh give it stamina increasing effects or give you resistance to heat or cold um but yeah like so fires you can you can drop down some wood in the flint and then you hit it with your sword and it spark yeah it was it was 
It was just funny because I think the guy was saying, basically, the level of detail that went into Zelda is kind of what you would you would have expected mm-hmm. Red Dead to go for. Yeah, it's interesting that Red Dead didn't do that because I think even Zelda is just sort of like it's just touching the surface of any sort of like survivalist gameplay. Right. Um, so I would have expected that from Red Dead. But in terms of the open world, I don't know how it is in Red Dead, but at the start of uh, of Zelda, you can... Well, there's like a little bit of a tutorial area, but after that, you can literally go anywhere. You're only, uh, you're only impeded by certain areas where like you might need heat resistance, like a volcano, mm-hmm. or you might need warm clothes for uh for a snowy mountain or something like that. You can go anywhere and do things in any order more or less. But yeah, speaking of my favorite games in the series, I've only played Super Mario Odyssey for a couple hours now, mm-hmm. but I'm having a lot of fun with that just because even more so than Legend of Zelda or the other stuff I play on Switch, it, it's got a very casual feel to it. It feels sort of like um Galaxy did, except obviously it's less galaxy based. Um, but it's just sort of a casual fun romp where you collect a bunch of shit. And I'm always a fan of that. Mm-hmm. Um, if anything, there's like way too much shit to c- collect, but I don't feel rushed to do it. So it, it, it's a relaxing game. It looks great. A lot of casual fun. And uh, I would recommend it. I'm sure. <laughs> Here's the thing I don't have to recommend these games because I'm sure anyone <laughs> who has a Switch either already has them or already knows about them. Um, so, you know, speaking of the gifts I got over the holidays, uh, talking about the Switch and whatnot. Did you get pajama uh, pants? No, but close. <laughs> um, I got, um, they're great. I got, a, uh, what do you call that? It's like a, it's like a, it's like a throw blanket, but it's okay. like super soft or whatever. Yeah, It's yeah. warm. And, but yeah, so I, I put it on my bed. And when you're going to sleep, it's great. But then, like, during the night, it gets, like, way too hot. Mm-hmm. And so what's, what, what's been happening, well, I took it off now. But what was happening was that every single night, I was having a goddamn nightmare because of this blanket. I swear to God. Like, as soon as I put the blanket on the bed. Mm-hmm. Well, no, not as soon as, as, soon as I went to sleep. Um, <laughs> as soon as I put the nut blanket on the bed, I just start <laughs> screaming. <laughs> it's a fucking nightmare. <laughs> But yeah, I think it was just because like I was so warm. I don't know if that's if that causes weird dreams or whatever. But I was having a nightmare every night, and like I hardly ever have dreams. It was just so. I don't know what the fuck that was, but maybe it's because you've been watching summer camp. What was it called? <laughs> Sleepaway camp. <laughs> Sleepaway camp. Yeah. No, that was, yeah, that was a couple months ago, I think. Though, like, um, and I don't have nightmares about that shit. I'm, I'm a little pussy, uh, <laughs> but. Yeah, it was like, oh, man, some of them were really graphic. I don't know if I – I probably shouldn't talk about it here. But um, I don't want to have these fucking nightmares. So I got I, – well, I didn't get rid of the blanket, but I took it off the bed. Um, I don't know sure if I'll be able to use any of that. Are you sure it's the heat that's from the blanket that's causing this problem? What, what, what are you insinuating? I don't know. Someone cursed it. <laughs> that's, just, uh, that's such a weird – it's a small pla- smallpox blanket. I probably will cut that as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I no, it, it it is odd. Like that's the only reason I'm giving to it because like every time I would wake up, I would be like, I'd be sweaty because it would be super warm. Uh-huh. But yeah, like as soon as I started using it, I started having nightmares every night. Um, I might cut this part later. I don't know, but. The one nightmare I had was I was actually uh, I was at this supermarket. Ah. <laughs> I mean, that's a nightmare in itself. Nothing was on sale. <laughs> um, Can you believe these prices? What's the um, deal with these prices? <laughs> <laughs> um, See, so yeah, I was at the supermarket with, uh, with a friend uh-huh. and you know, doing what you do. And we get out of the supermarket and in the, in the once we get to the parking lot, I like lose track of her. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden I look around and I thought it was just like, I thought it was just a bunch of like homeless people. Like it was sort of like a homeless camp. Uh-huh. 
there's no like there's no like people park there it was just like a homeless camp and i started looking and like they were like cannibals like there was like half-eaten half-eaten corpses and stuff like all around and these people were eating them and i'm looking around i can't see my friend i'm like whoa like this dream this blanket is taking me on a fucking trip um yeah i don't know it's just like it was like a really detailed gruesome close-up shot where i was just like looking at these different things and i was trying to find my friend who had the shopping cart and i was wondering like well was she eating i don't know and i woke up and i still had like that image burned into my head and i'm like oh but yeah after that i was just i was just done with that maybe this blanket's laced with something yeah like smallpox <laughs> I don't, maybe maybe that's a sign actually that I should I think I thought about that dream. I'm wondering maybe it means that I feel guilty that I have so much food and that the homeless don't. Sure. So maybe I should give maybe I should give the smallpox blanket to a homeless person. Let them have some nightmares for a change. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so that was that was my uh my blanket story. <laughs> you know what? The funny thing is I I actually can jump off from here to another story you have. <laughs> oh wow. Let's hear it. Uh, I will say, I don't know I don't know if it's something we we if it would be good to use on the podcast. We'll see. Just because I don't know how funny it might be or not. <laughs> um all right, so did I, t- did I tell you I was having like fucking shoulder pain that that spread to my back and my legs? Um, <laughs> I don't think so. All right, so I I woke up one day and I just had just pain in my shoulder, like like the typical pain you get when you just sleep in the wrong position. Yeah, but um, as the day went on. Like the pain kind of, there was like a numbness in my left arm and then, oh my God. And my neck got really stiff and I couldn't really, couldn't really turn, turn around. Right. Um, So it sounds like you're having a heart attack. Yeah. So we'll get to that. (laughs) Uh Oh, (laughs) Uh, I had plans that night. I was going to meet up with my friends, but by the time I had to go, the pain was so bad. I couldn't really walk. Jesus Christ. Yeah, like I had to like fucking just waddle around really slowly. So was it affecting your legs or was it just cuz of like your back and stuff? It was I think it was cuz of my back cuz like if I if I just walk too fast it kind of just hurt. Right. So like I don't know, I've never had that happen like how it one pain spread so quickly like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the next day, go to a what are they called when they put needles in you? Mm, doctor's office. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> when they when they the 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 therapy thing where like, they, the needles. Oh, um, acupuncture. Yes. So I went to to go to a acupuncture puncturist is that the word i don't know uh my mom knows someone who's in who who does acupuncture Mm -hmm. um she asked me how long i had the pain i said you know it's only been a few days so she said okay i'm not i don't really want to do anything like don't want to do the full body yet because it's only been a few days so she just gave like a couple of she put a couple of uh pins in back of my neck loosened it up a little bit and then uh, when I went home, I put on some, some, uh, what do you call it? Like, uh, Bengay, basically vapor rub. Yeah. Just some hot, uh, icy hot, some, yeah, icy hot, one of those kind of things. And then kind of got better. Um, but a few days that like, it's still the shoulder pain was still there for a couple of days. Mm-hmm. So one night. <laughs> I I realize, 
and you know I have this often. Well, I used to have this often. I haven't, I haven't had them in a while. But I realize I'm about to have a panic attack. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right. I know the drill. Uh, Going to put on some music, some slow music, chill out for 10 minutes until I calm down. <laughs> right. I couldn't find my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> panic! <laughs> It made it worse because I'm like, where I put it? But in that yeah. state, I'm just like, oh, God, where is it? 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 So I couldn't yeah. find them. And I start freaking out. And I can't breathe. And I'm like, oh, I have the I have the numbness in my left arm. Is this a heart attack? Is this not a panic attack? Is this a heart attack? Yeah, see, I don't know how funny this is. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's hilarious how you were fearing for your life. <laughs> but, okay, well, what's the – yeah, keep going. Yeah, so this was late at night, and it was the first time I had to go to someone and say, I'm having a panic attack. And and then it went away, and I just felt dumb for asking for help. Oh, yeah. But, that's always what, that's always what you're worried about when you, you are thinking of asking for help is like, well, what if it's nothing, and then I'm going to feel dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, no, I mean, I, I don't know. It was just the, the your nightmare story kind of just reminded me of that. Mm-hmm. Because it was late at night. So, and and now, because I'm worried about feeling that way again, I can't play God of War at night because it's the same thing as when I had played Just Cause when I when I told you about that. You so, get that with God of War too? I'm now getting that with God of War. <laughs> oh my God. Let me tell you, violent video games, they're they're giving our children panic attacks. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 only certain games. It's That's the weird thing. So... Yeah, that, yeah, you can play Red Dead. That's fine. Yeah, Red Dead, Witcher. Uh, I, I, there are plenty of, plenty of games of violence and explosions in them, and I have no problem with. But there, were, it's. So I think there were three games. I don't know why it's always three when I talk about games. But well, you know, life goes in threes. Yeah. Um. So, just cause, obviously. And that one, mm-hmm. I feel like I know the exact reason why. It's because, uh, obviously, the explosions. Part of it is the voice acting. The the I'm sorry, not the voice acting. The dialogue in the game is sort of delayed. It doesn't mm-hmm. sound natural, and for some reason, right. that it just it just does it for me. I don't know why. And then yeah, Legend of Zelda when. She was talking that bad British accent. I was having a panic attack. <laughs> Why didn't they hire someone better? Why didn't they hire someone better? <laughs> and then Batman Arkham Knight, the third one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was the same thing. Uh, that one. The dialogue? No, not the. I mean, same thing is that it also gave me. Oh, okay. But no, it wasn't the dialogue. The dialogue of that game was fine. I think it was more. That one is probably more of the uh, the explosions. Make it sound like I have PTSD and I don't. <laughs> yeah, no. What's with you and explosions? <laughs> yeah. Do you go on tour in Iraq or something? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, God of War. <laughs> I think. I don't imagine there's much explosions in that. Not necessarily explosions, but you know, when you're when you're tearing enemies to shreds. Mm-hmm. And you get sort of, not explosions, but sort of explosive sounds. I don't know. I don't know what it is. So loud sounds do it too? I mean, if loud, uh, wouldn't the gunshots do it then in Red Dead? Oh, yeah, that's why I'm... Now, does it have... Mm, I wonder if it has more to do with the times either the times of the day or the times in your life where you're playing these games. But you recently played Red Dead. Yeah, I recently played Red Dead. Played God of War right after it. Huh. The, the I feel like the time argument might work for just cause... Like the time of the day? Well... Or... Go ahead. No, I was going to say, like, when I was playing just cause, I was... I think I was uh, a lot more anxious. Right. Than I am now. But... Yeah, actually, when I'm playing God of War during the day, I'm fine. Huh. Um, so maybe it's I, lack of I'm, sleep at if the I'm time? I'm a little tired. I was a little tired today, and I was playing a bit today, and I felt I felt a little. So I was like, eh, put this down for a bit. 
just a weird thing. Ray, the sensitive gamer. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I don't know. Should we keep this or no? No, I think we I think we can keep some of it. Okay. And that way we can put panic attacks in the title. <laughs> get Great. those get those clicks. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> now podcasting is gonna give you a panic attack. <laughs> nah. Unless you Josh send... Josh, you cut out. I can't hear your voice, and that really bothers me. <laughs> Suddenly your voice explodes back into life. Yeah. No. Oh. Your voice uh, is delayed. I can't. <laughs> I shouldn't be making fun of you so much, but no, but it is weird. I don't know. Yeah, that that's very odd. I don't. I'll. I was about to say I'll, I want to see where this goes. Let me not say it like that. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, that is that is weird that it, it only happens with certain games. Yeah. Uh, I, I I don't think anything else really. Does it in particular? I remember the the, the mm-hmm. funniest the funniest one that happened, and I even even while it happened, I'm just like, really, this this did it. <laughs> I right. was I was playing. I might have told you this. I was playing Football Manager, and it's a stressful game. <laughs> it is. Um, you can adjust the speed setting of your matches. So and they started flying around. You were just like, oh, <laughs> yeah. So it was kind of slow. I kind of wanted to see what it was like on full. I put it on full, and then I started to have a panic attack. <laughs> oh my Just god! Just because they were going so fast. Neymar. <laughs> he shoots. He shoots. He shoots. <laughs> uh, but that was that was in high school, and I wasn't particularly anxious then. But like I said, I I would get these like once a year, twice. Yeah, a year. that kind of throws. I feel like that sort of throws out my time in your life thing because that was a long time ago the football manager one was a while ago um yeah just cause was in college and batman was also college but while i was home that just reminds me of i've told you this story before but sort of speaking of nightmares when i was a little kid i used to have this recurring nightmare i don't really know what it was about Mm -hmm. but um i i remember the visual of uh there's like a pyramid and there was like an elevator going up the side of it. Sort of like one of those outside elevators that you might see at a hotel or something. It's kind of dope actually. Yeah. I might build that eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get rich enough to build my nightmares. Uh-huh. I'll build a, I'll build a supermarket and put a homeless camp full of cannibals outside of it. <laughs> and give them small um, box blankets. <laughs> <laughs> my ultimate fantasy. I mean, nightmare. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like I remember seeing that. And I remember I like I didn't really know the implications, but I remember thinking like that elevator going towards the top of that pyramid meant that like the end of the world was coming. But part of that was there was like really fast, really fast whispering. Mm-hmm. And that. I don't know. I don't know. You probably couldn't qualify as like a, a panic attack because I was sleeping, but that always got to me, and that made me like freak the fuck out. And I'll wake up like crying. That happened to me like a couple times. Um, that, never happened to me again. That is creepy. But fast pace. Yeah, that's. Yeah, like even today, like I, I, I'm sure if I heard that, I wouldn't like it. I don't think I would. I don't think I would uh, freak out. But it's just like. The sound of it was just really combined with me, my child, my child mind thinking that the world was ending Mm -hmm. and having this weird, fast whispering at me. I'm like, okay. Um, Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, that sort of sounds like like some stories I've heard of. uh, Not to say that, obviously, as far as I know, I don't have schizophrenia, but that does actually remind me of some stories with that. That's interesting. Just uh, just before we get away from that subject of the whispers, yeah. Uh, what's that? What's that? What's that game that came out like last year? This girl, that your character is a girl who has schizophrenia, but it's like she's like a tribes woman. Oh yes, that's um, Sanoa's Sacrifice. 
Yeah. I saw that game. I'm like, I'm I'm not going to be able to play that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. I know that that game would do it for me. Yeah, I wonder if it would, though. I don't know, because you seem to seems to change from game to game. I don't know if there's any sort of, like, the voice. Uh, I'm guessing there would be some sort of voice uh, manipulation just because she's sort of having these hallucinations or something. I, I, I haven't watched the game. I haven't played it. Um, I've seen a bit of gameplay. It's. I've heard. I've heard people say it's good. I've heard people say it's bad. It seems. It seems like an odd game. At least I think of it. I could be wrong, but I think of it more as like a storytelling, storytelling yeah, yeah. platform than as a game so much. Right. Um, but I think there is like gameplay elements in it. Yeah. I just remember speaking of movies and speaking of uh, nightmares. I've definitely told you this story, but as as a kid, I remember that I walked by when my parents were watching the original Psycho. Um, obviously not when it came out. I'm not that old. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I was walking by when they were watching it on TV and I saw the scene where uh, Norman Bates stabs the woman in the shower. Mm -hmm. uh, spoiler alert. Uh <laughs> <laughs> if anyone here hasn't watched uh hasn't watched Psycho or the remake of Psycho or Bates Motel. Um actually I don't think that happens in Bates Motel. That's beforehand. But anyway. Um I walked by during that scene and from that point on for like years, whenever I was in the shower, mm -hmm. I would always like have the curtain open a little bit because mm -hmm. I would be like freaked the fuck out. I'd think somebody was gonna stab me. And yeah, my mom would always ask, like, there's water all over the floor. Were you leaving the curtain open? And I'm like, no. Uh, I definitely I was. Trying I didn't to want stab to stab. Me, mom. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's sort of like, and I think this is sort of how people, well, I'm not going to pretend to know, but this is sort of how people who have like uh, compulsions or whatever sort of justify things is that they say, well, it's probably not going to happen. Like, if I don't, if I don't touch this doorknob three times, I'm probably not going to die. Right, but right. the amount of effort that I'll take to do it is better than taking that chance. Mm -hmm. So it was sort of the same thing where I was just like, I know there's probably not going to be anyone there, but I'm going to just keep this open in case. But yeah, yeah, that, that was like, that was like the first movie that fucked me up. Um, so speaking of movies and speaking about nightmares, I wanted to add one movie to my recommendations that I watched in 2018 but did not come out in 2018 mm -hmm. uh is dreamscape and that's uh that's starring dennis quaid um and it is on amazon right now uh came out in 84 that was that was a pretty fun one um wait is it a horror yeah it's it's got it's got like a, a good amount of like uh practical effects but yeah, Dream Dreamscape was a fun watch, so I'd recommend that to uh, I would recommend that to people. Sounds. Uh, a, I seem to only... maybe maybe Go this ahead. isn't the right word, but if it has Dennis Quaid in it, it sounds legit. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was a good movie. And yeah, this is turning into like the movie recommendation podcast. Um, but just looking at my watch list again, I would definitely recommend. I might have first watched this in 2017. I'm not sure if I watched it in 2018, but. Mm -hmm. uh, Body melt, body melt, is great. Um, came out in 1994. Uh, I fucking love the song in that in that movie. Uh, but that, that's another that's another good one. Mm -hmm. um, you might get more of an effect out of it just by watching it with somebody because that's usually how I watch these movies. Mm -hmm. You know, most of these, um, I'd probably say like as movies aren't like the greatest thing ever, but it's just the, the mix of, you know, this old timey, uh, these old timey practical effects. And the fact that I love sort of schlocky horror movies make mm -hmm. it just mwah, beautiful. Right. Oh. Oh. I've never, never really had horror movies. And then, and then the shittier horror, shitty looking horror movies were even less appealing. <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh yeah, those those are the only ones that appeal to me. I honestly don't like 
it's not that I don't like well done horror movies. I just don't like uh I don't like modern horror movies that really try to be scary. Mm-hmm. Or rather try to scare you, not try to be scary. Like they always throw in jump scares. Jump scares and they always just have incoherent plots and they have rules that they don't stick to and so there's no reason to be scared because they're just doing whatever they want in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of the old the old horror. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. It's been the Me Boys podcast. That name is sticking now, I swear. Uh, thanks for listening to us, to us talk about nightmares and movies. And uh, we'll see you next time. And remember, don't piss in my cup, and I won't piss in your cup. <laughs>